So, what is bioinformatics and why do we need it? As I said before, the main reason why we need bioinformatics is actually because of the incredible amount of genome sequence or DNA sequence that has been generated the last few, well, last two decades. So in 1995, there was the number of bases in the database in the order of 1 million. Today, it's in the order of 1,000 billion bases. And most of that is from whole genome sequencing data. So the number of sequences the number is, is one, it's getting close to 1 billion nowadays. Maybe it's half a billion or a bit less today. So today, in December 2016, there are 224 billion bases and 200 million sequences in the database. And you can find uh, for this link to look at the statistics. So what is bioinformatics? Well, actually, the term was already invented in the, in the in 1970, and it is the study of information processing in biotic systems. Or other way to put it is the development and implementation of computer programs that enable efficient access to use and management of various types of biological information. That means, basically, storing sequence data and other type of data and accessing it, searching it, and finding parts of it in an efficient and good way. But you are doing the computation algorithm for that. Oh, and also, another definition is development of new algorithms, mathematical formulas, and statistical measures to assess relationships among members of large biological data sets. So basically, that's analyzing all this data and doing that using new algorithms, new techniques. So how can we learn something about it? So in short, the goal of mathematics is to increase our understanding of biological processes. And the difference from bioinformatics compared to other methods doing that is that we primarily are using computational methods. And these methods can include many different things, but include pattern recognition, data mining, machine learning, etc. etc. algorithm visualization. So the difference compared to mathematics compared to other studies in biology is that we are primarily using computers and we are actually extracting a lot of data, not only from one source of them, but also from many, many different sources. Not only our own, own study, but also from other studies. And we do that by using a lot of different computational techniques. So there are lots of different sub-areas. Bioinformatics. This is just a subset that I found on Wikipedia. So this includes sequence alignment, finding genes, assembling of genomes, drug discovery, uh, protein structure work, gene expression, interaction of proteins, genome wide association studies, disease detection, modeling of evolution, systems biology, etc. etc. So I will just briefly, briefly mention a few of these what they are. So a fundamental method basis from very, very large part of all bioinformatics. Finding sequence, finding sequences in sequence databases. And to do this, you need to align the sequences. You need to take a sequence of, of DNA or protein and align it to another sequence of DNA or protein and ask, are these similar? Are these homologous? Which means that they have a common ancestor. Had it once upon a time, the evolution is had a common ancestor or not. So a lot of work has been developed over making better methods or faster methods to do this and uh, learning a lot about evolution at the same time. And you, for instance, you want to find also doing this finding mutations, but you also want to do finding relationships between different sequences of different organisms. Another big area is the genome assembly gene findings. So I briefly mentioned that before. It's basically, if you do sequencing a product, you have a large set of uh, short sequences. It can be different lengths, depending on different methods you have, but there are anything from 20, 30 base pairs up to a thousand, or they are paired to each other, etc. So they're short parts, given that the genome can be up to a billion of base pairs long. So one problem is like, how do I put this together? I can do this in an efficient way. Another part is then, of course, once I put it together, is to find what are the genes, how are the regulatory, what is the part that is regulating it, and when they're expressed. So this is basically a way of understanding how a cell works. And also, of course, how it evolved. Drug design and discovery. So, of course, an important area of all medical or biological research is to get better treatment for 
diseases. And to do that, one thing is actually you might want to identify new targets of drugs. So you want to look for some good targets that are unique to bacteria. So you can, uh, if you find some gene family that's unique to bacteria that doesn't exist in eukaryotes, that might be a good target for an antibiotic. Or you want to find some cells that are only expressed, some genes that are only expressed in cancer cells. And you say, okay, let's have, we can knock this out. Or if there's something about it, maybe we can treat cancer. Or you can find some cells, genes that are frequently mutated in cancer cells, like P53. And you say, okay, can we do some uh, changes of these mutations? So, uh, I think P53 is a part of cancer treatment, etc. And then that's one part of it. Once if you identify one of these targets, you can also use a lot of computational methods to identification of the drugs and develop new drugs. So that's a part of the protein structure work in this case. Protein structure has from the beginning been an important part of bioinformatics, and this is a big part of focus of this course. So you need to maybe go ahead with identify and model protein structures because it's so much cheaper to sequence pro, pro, sequences, DNA sequences, and to get a protein structure. So for most proteins in the world, you will never ever have an experimentally verified protein structure. But by using computational bioinformatical methods, we can actually produce quite good models. And this can be used then for understanding the function of it, of the protein, getting identified drug binding sites, etc., understanding also the physics and the evolution of folding of proteins. Protein interactions, proteins and other market molecules do not act alone, they interact with other molecules. So a large part of bioinformatics has been focused on identifying these, uh, these interactions. You do that combining the experimental methods with the prediction methods and the genome sequences and the proteomic methods and also pure prediction methods. And once you have this prediction of what is interacting with what, you can actually do a protein structure prediction and try to model the whole complexes. You want to can study protein expression. Gene expression is expressed when and where, where are different genes expressed. So what genes are expressed in the testes compared to the brain? What is genes are, when are, what part of the cell cycle, cycle are different genes expressed, etc, etc. And this needs, you can do it both by analyzing experimental data, but you can also use it to try to predict it, try to model it, try to understand it. Evolution, as I said, is fundamental to all biology, and without evolution we can't really do biology. So, and we have learned a lot of evolutionary information by genome sequences. It's probably one of the most important contributions. Today, we know that there was an interbreeding between Neanderthals and humans that we had no idea about even five years ago. We thought it was not like that. We know that all humans originated in Africa a few hundred years ago. We, we can even study movements of uh, patterns of people in the world. We know we can study um, interbreeding of different uh, groups, etc. etc. There's a lot of evolution questions that can be studied. And we can also use it to identify mutations. We can take groups of people that are sick and not sick or are, and identify what is the mutation, what is the okay, causes of these mutations. And of course, like they also use this for creating better treatments. And we can use also our complete understanding because the genome is complete information. We know what is in the cell. We know everything that should be there. So we can start modeling the entire cells. And this can be used not only for understanding the biology of the cell, but also for optimizing a cell. For instance, if we want to use a technology to produce something, we can try to tune the system around so we can produce more of that protein. We can, for instance, produce more ethanol if we want to use it for fuel, etc. And we can do stimulation and do all the things together.